Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 15 of Learning Motion Control with PLCs. I want to talk about a, a little bit different type of I.O. and really it's just something kind of fun that I played with and I want to show it off a little bit but it's also kind of a, a learning opportunity here I guess. So a, a while back uh, I decided that debugging from my computer and walking around, actually I was having to teach some points on a really big gantry robot and I kept having to go back to the computer and there were problems with it. I would jog it and it would get stuck when my internet or Wi-Fi would go away. And I just needed something better than the built-in visualizations like we talked about in Series 1. So I wanted something better than that. So what I came up with was a wireless Xbox 360 controller. And so I wrote a little bit of code to handle that. I'll show a picture of it up here. It's just the controller and they sell a like a 10 to 15 dollar uh, Microsoft dongle that lets you hook up to four of these up to a PC. Uh, so what I've done is created a program. I'll drag it in here. I called it TC Joy. This isn't open source at the moment, but if there's enough interest in in doing what I've done in this video, uh, shoot me a comment or a message or something. And I'll, as soon as I know that there's some interest in it from other people in this then maybe I'll rewrite it. It uses some proprietary uh, ADS libraries that we wrote at my other my old company and otherwise the code itself I can port over to the current ADS and not use that. So long story short let me show you what it does. Basically you hook up a controller and once it sees controller uh, right here I just got controller zero. This isn't a, a fully baked program. It needs a little work as well if I was ever going to share it. Uh, but you can see as I move these um, joysticks, I get a little bit of feedback here that we, we're reading this in. So I'm using, on this, I'm using a, a library called uh, uh, J2i X input wrapper. So this is the X input driver from Microsoft that I want to say, it's been a little while since I wrote this, I want to say it comes through DirectX. But anyway, that's not super important. Just know that I'm using this and I'm able to come over here and type in my net ID and the port and the rate I want to communicate at and then I put in my instance name of the function block that I've brought in and then I'll connect up. I'll show you what that function block looks like in just a second. So he found it here and then I've added in some dead zones because if you notice here I've got quite a bit of counts and if I move it like or here let's do this one. I move it off to the left and I let go boom I'm, I'm out of the dead zone there already. So this controller is pretty old and ragged but um, you can set that on this page. So that's why I put it here. Uh, so what that'll do is just null out anything less than that, and the max is 32767. So if I come over to the PLC here, I've added in a function block that I wrote, and it's got some inputs and outputs. All these different buttons are inputs, um, or rather, sorry, those are outputs of this function block. And then we've got some locals, and so what I do is watchdog it to where if I don't get a... Um, a response within the dead time which is right the watchdog's at 250 milliseconds so a quarter second um, if I don't get that then I null all these inputs. outputs so that stuff like that happens right here and that's that's a gist of it it just kind of handles this data and checks it and because what will happen is if you're jogging it like a meter a second on some gantry and you lose wireless to the controller or you lose uh, ADS from like my host PC that this is hooked to, to the PLC, what will happen is it'll just keep going at that rate. You can't ever say like, no, 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 I want zero, I want zero. So that's what this does is it just nulls everything to zero. So as long as your machine is not moving in the controller's like normal state, then you'll be good. And just a, uh, <laughs> it's worth mentioning, none of this is safety rated per se. So obviously you would never want to do this from like inside the machine. There should always be a regular... Uh, full-on safety system enabled as well. So if I hop online here and come to main and we'll just check out these uh, things here. I've got TC Joy as an instance here and then I've got A button. Oh, actually I have these set up to do stuff. So um, left shoulder, uh, you know, analog. Let's do my analogs where are they there's some. So I get these in just like an analog input off of a slice. So it's pretty cool. And then this is just some stuff you don't see normally. Um, and it, it'll get the battery info as well, I think it should, but that doesn't seem to be working right now. So I have rigged that up and let me show you the changes I've made in my program. It's super easy to use. So here's my program. 
So right after, actually to start the homing process from state 20, it's just going to wait here after I reset. This is the same code we played with before. But instead, I added in this tcjoy.y button. If he goes true, then we jump down to state 200. And I just have a few functions here. The y button will home it after you press it once. And home it every time after that, once we're you know kind of sitting in this this state that just waits on commands. And then our little dance we did on the couple episodes ago, maybe one episode ago, uh, the B button will initiate that. And then uh, I like to do it with this controller with motion like that so that if you do rig this up to a real machine, you don't accidentally hit it when it's on your desk. I like to do this sort of like fake dead man switch thing. And so my right trigger axis, I'll hold it down. And as long as it's greater than zero and then something goes wrong, I let go, everything gets, you know, stopped or, or what have you and comes back. So um, I'm using that to sort of enable the motion to make sure I have a good grip on the controller. And then I handle like the easier to hit buttons like the, the axes, the, the normal thumbsticks and things like that. So that jumps here to state 30. Um, this is I did a little bit of jogging so that we can jog back and forth on the 3D printer. And then this is... Um, if I use the left trigger, that enables the absolute moves with the joystick. So let's go check that out. Um, it's just we're playing with the same axis again. I just thought it'd be fun to, to do this. So let's move over to the, to the real world and check it out. We're here at the machine again. We've got the stepper hooked up. This is the Xbox 360 controller at the bottom. And what I can do is just hit the Y button there, and it should initiate the homing sequence. And then I've mapped our B button to do our little dance from earlier with the MC Absolute move. And I've got another mode here where this is my, my dead man's trigger here. So now we're in uh, velocity jog mode where I used MC jog. And then I just mapped the velocity over. I'm going to do little short jogs. Little faster jogs. It is a little bit janky. The code's not really that great. But it works could be done better if you really needed it for something and then if I let off of that and I come back here I hold this one that puts me in my MC absolute tracking mode that I just wrote earlier and I can move this position it'll go to the absolute position of that joystick so I've just used my map function uh, like we did before to map that axis to the absolute position of you know Z, here I'll use this zero on this side 100 here from our home position and then 200 here so I've just mapped that over there with that function so anyway this is the uh, Xbox 360 controller I just thought I'd show it off it's pretty fun and when you get into big machines and you know starting debug sequences and doing various things uh, it can be pretty cool uh, to use this and it actually is a little bit more robust than using uh, Twincat Viz so if this is something that you think you'd use if you're a professional twin cat programmer or something maybe be willing to donate five bucks to help me uh, uh, get motivated to open source this project and, and do it in a way that I can open source and share it then definitely get in touch and let me know so uh, y'all have a good day and I will catch you on the, the next video which is just going to be our wrap up so have a good one